Hey there, YouTube family. It's important that I let you guys know First Republic Bank, these guys are done. They're cooked. They're finished. And it's actually pretty bad news for the U.S. economy. The government doesn't want them. The other banks, the other big banks, they don't want them. And just like in the opening video, every bone is broken. They're all stitched up. They're lifeless at this point, while Bitcoin is alive and well. Perhaps this is the future monetary system sitting on the sidelines, thriving and mocking the old. But will a continued bank crisis create a new Bitcoin bull run or will these small bank failures like First Republic basically damage the U.S. economy and bring all the high risk assets like crypto back to their lows? Now, I've got some important technicals to review that are a must see. This is the Stocks with Josh show. Thank you guys for hitting that like. Subscribe to get these daily stock and crypto news and technicals. Okay, First Republic Bank. Now, this is a big problem for all of us. First Republic is insolvent and they should no longer even be considered a viable entity. Their balance sheet is totally upside down and the only reason that regulators haven't shut them down is to prevent panic towards the other small banks which are in just as much trouble. But it is 100% over for ticker symbol FRC. Now, when SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, collapsed, it sent shockwaves through the banking system and it rattled the regulators. They know that FRC is done. They're just trying to create the illusion of stability right now. And when the big banks, they gave $30 billion as a rescue package, it was simply a stunt on the part of the regulators to suggest that this was just an isolated and controlled banking event and that one of these bigger banks would likely swoop in and acquire First Republic's assets employees and offices. It was purely meant to calm the markets. And all those big banks are getting billions and billions of dollars, and this is what the Fed required of them. But this simply isn't true. Now, I want you guys to check out this article, Why Big Banks Are Reluctant to Rescue First Republic Again. Basically, the deposits are shrinking quickly. Their bond portfolio is underwater, and the big banks run the risk that a behind-the-scene move on the part of the regulators to step in could end up seizing the assets and do a deal with one of their rivals. So FRC is destined to die a slow death yet again in the face of, I would say, incompetent government bureaucrats who are unable or unwilling to provide clear and acceptable leadership. Basically, they fear that anything that they do is gonna create that shock to the system and and nobody wants to be responsible for that. Since First Republic's earnings, we basically learned that there's been a continued nonstop run on the bank. These guys lost an additional $72 billion in deposits in quarter one of 2023. Now, First Republic, this was a stock worth $120 just one month ago. It halted trading eight times on its way down to $6, dropping 70% in just the last three days alone. It is now down 98% from all-time highs, and it has plunged below a $1 billion market cap, making it officially a small cap. It's a high-risk small cap stock at this point, and it's on its way to becoming a micro cap soon. For perspective, First Republic Bank's price to book value is 0.08 cents as of April 27th. That's right, even at six bucks, these guys' book value is only eight cents per share. Keep that in mind. And on a fire sale, what do you think this thing could actually sell for? Six dollars or closer to eight cents. You know what I'm assuming, it's gonna be a lot closer to that eight cents. Now this is not a suggestion for you guys to buy, sell, or hold, but I have repeatedly told you on this page, I'm not buying FRC. Now I even got in my comment section the other day when I told everybody I'm not touching this stock, someone said, Josh, I locked and loaded my First Republic shares and I can't wait till this thing hits the moon. Guys, I'm telling you, and if the moon is eight cents, well then there you go. So I'm not buying FRC or the small regional banks, and the bottom line is neither is Wall Street. They got the message loud and clear when management refused to take questions after earnings. I would even argue that's because there is no future guidance for the CEO to give. The FDIC and the Fed, they're working on an exit plan and it doesn't include the investors. Those are the ones who are gonna take the hit. And the truth is that's fair because it was investors that rode this stock up all the way to $120 and it'll be investors who'll have to ride it down all the way potentially to eight cents. And is it any surprise why crypto degens and millennials have abandoned traditional banking. I want you guys to check out this article. Bitcoin represents a new hope for youthful investors. A breakdown of the demographics showed 76.5% of millennial investors aged 25 to 40, they own crypto. So 
is all of this going to basically lead to a surge in Bitcoin and crypto? That's what we're interested in. Before I look at that idea and examine the charts, if you need the better trade tools, then check out the link in the top pinned comment for the Moomoo investment app. These guys are currently offering up to 15 free stock to open and fund an account, as well as the potential of a cash coupon valued at 1,500 and a one month subscription to Benzinga Pro. Click on the link, start your investment journey today, and then you can come find a chat group that I host on the app called Stock Josh Fam. If you're a member of the chat, throw a heart in the comments. Now we've covered First Republic, which is a regional bank down on its luck, but how are all the rest of the regional banks doing? For that, let's check out the Spider S&P Regional Banking ETF, ticker KRE. Now, this chart looks nearly identical to FRC. Why isn't Wall Street swooping in and buying this amazing ETF on a 30% discount? Well, this chart is just as sad as First Republic. No dead cat bounce, nothing. Looking like a dead man's EKG flatlining. Still falling and looking for a bottom. So how does this affect all of us? Well, this investment sector is in trouble. And what you need to know is that the small banks, they play a critical role in the economy. Now check out this article. Smaller banks, critical role in the economy means distress raises recession risks. Wall Street Journal reports that 40% of all business lending comes from local and regional banks. And who are they lending to? Mostly to small businesses who make up 99.9% .9 of all business. Now I want you to check this out. Nearly half of all US employees are employed by small businesses. So that's half of you guys listening to me. You guys may work for small businesses. These banks are in the same trouble that First Republic is in. And that's why the KRE ETF is flatlining. Your boss is losing his lifeline to the credit needed to buy goods, to fund the next project. Hello, Mr. George. How much you pay for the, for the new guy? 20 bucks? No, too much money. He's no good, no good operator. Or to replace equipment damaged on the work site. It's a credit boa constrictor slowly squeezing the life out of small business and the economy. And the Fed knows it and he wants to use it to raise unemployment on his goal to curb inflation. Now you have to know that all the regional banks are watching FRC up on the chopping block and they're absolutely trying to shore up their businesses, which looks like no lending, nada, no dollars hitting the streets. And all of this is going to lead to the economy slowing, ultimately bringing a contraction to stocks as well as high risk investments. Now, we, I've, been, I've been saying for a long time, the easy money is drying up, but when the Fed draws out the data that he's looking for, then there's gonna be a pivot and the money printing machines and the stimulus checks, they'll start flowing again. And this is further down the road. And I think the pump up that we saw in Bitcoin soaring out of a long extended crypto bear winter was an early signal of the future impact of this monetary easing that the smart money is seeing getting ready to happen on the horizon. The big question that we're all trying to answer right now for crypto is was this recent push up to 31,000, is that the local high or are we going higher? Now, you guys know I called 32K. I'm gonna cover that with you right now. We did pull back to 26,991. And the big question again is, is that the local low before making another attempt to go higher? You guys know I called my buy zone 26,566. That was my entry and it is perhaps conservative. It still makes sense to me that Bitcoin should hit 32K before eventually cooling off. It's impossible to know whether we're gonna pull back now or later. But technically, I still think Bitcoin has that room to the upside and that's what's driving my decision making. And it absolutely will be negatively affected by these macroeconomic conditions with the banks that I'm talking to you guys about today. I want to point out the Gaussian channel. It turned green on the four day candle chart, which is a very bullish signal for Bitcoin long term. Now, I do think that we're on our way to 32K or even as high as 34K. And the 26,991 pullback is very possible all we're gonna get for the time being. Now, having said that, it is also very likely that after we get to 32 or 34K, Bitcoin is going to trend down to eventually come back and backtest the top of the Gaussian channel as it has for every other transition between a bear to bull market in the past. Now, the timeline on this transition is likely to take us all the way to the end of this year, and it's likely to be a slow bleed off from the peak run up of Bitcoin, which means 
Bitcoin's going to shoot up and then this thing is just going to slowly degrade until it gets to the back at the top of the Gaussian channel. One of the things that I'm always watching out for is the candles. And I want to point out again, we don't have a high wick blow off candle on Bitcoin, which means that the run up in my eyes hasn't finished. Now here's where it gets difficult though. It's impossible to know, like I said, whether we could pull back to the support at 26566 or whether we might just move up from here. The best that I can give you guys today is that the local top for Bitcoin doesn't look into me. And whether you want to hold out a little bit longer and see if it pulls back more or just get back in, what I want you guys to consider is that as we study past moves above the Gaussian channel from a bear to bull transition, all of them are different. But when the top is made, it does typically cool off and it trends down for at least six to seven months before building back towards another bull move up. So you don't have to fear missing out on the next big Bitcoin move above 32 all the way back up to 60. You don't have to fear that. It's not going to run away from you that far. We're likely to hit between 32 and 34K and then move sideways and down for the rest of the year. Now, that's all I've got for you guys today. As always, I want to thank you guys for hitting the like. Hit that subscribe so you can get the notifications of my daily video posts. I'll be covering Bitcoin, ETH, ADA, and Solana again very soon because I want to dive deeper into the charts and show you guys what I see. Peace and blessings, my friends. Take care. We'll see you in the chat.